Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah. If you're new here, thanks for joining us. And today is a special treat. I have my dad. Now you may know him. Hi everybody. <laughs> you may know him from grocery hauls. He's done a few of them right. around here. He likes to be my assistant. Yes. <laughs> and he really secretly would love to do his own grocery hauls. Yes, I really would. So I think I probably wouldn't even have to tell you that he's my dad. When I had Hope, um, Hope was in the NICU for a week. She was born early. And um, one day they asked me, can, can a chaplain come up and pray with you? And I'm like, sure, that's fine. And this chaplain walks in the room and she's like, are you Jerry David's daughter? And I'm like, uh, nope. yeah. And my name is my, of course, I, that's not my, that's my maiden name. So she wouldn't have known it from my chart or anything. She, she knew it literally from my face. Are you face. kidding me? Oh, <laughs> she used to work with him. She, he yeah. used to be a chaplain for the city of Lincoln yeah. and um, a volunteer chaplain. And she worked with him and she... At St. E? Yeah. No. Yeah. She's a chaplain at, at the hospital now. Oh my goodness. It was that's so Marie. funny. Her yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, she's a great <laughs> she guy. recognized me only from yeah. my face, so that yeah. was a first for me. Yeah. Crazy. So yeah, yeah, we look a little bit alike. Yeah. <laughs> Today we thought we'd talk to you some about parenting because he's my parent, and yeah, thought that'd be a fun topic. I like it. I like it. So what do you want to talk about parenting? Well. I would like to hear from everybody if I did a good job yeah. parenting. <laughs> it's all him. Only yes, him. it is me. My yes. mom had nothing to yes. do with it at all. <laughs> Actually, you don't realize this, but it's also in my two brothers and my sister will tell you, it's also my mother. Oh, yes. It was my mother who parented three boys and then there was a daughter. But uh, and my dad... Uh, at that time, when we were growing up, worked two jobs because the women didn't work outside the home back in yeah. the 50s, 60s. And so my mother was really like a single parent in a lot mm -hmm. of ways. Mm -hmm. And with three growing boys, and we're each two years apart, I'm the oldest. I mean, that's tough yeah. for, you know, to handle some boys. Ooh, but the stories they can tell. But we can not tell some stories. <laughs> but she was a phenomenal parent. And all... All my other two brothers and myself were all in our 60s, and when she calls us, we still tremor a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we weren't afraid funny. of her, but she can read into us so well, yeah. and she she knows exactly. Her gift was knowing exactly the right questions yes. to ask. Yeah, she oh, could she's good at that. Always <laughs> ask the right she questions. Did. Even to nowadays, like sometimes I when I'm struggling in one parenting situation. She's the one I call, and she yeah, always has she, a good idea. She is <laughs> always of anybody I've ever met. She's the most creative disciplinarian I've ever seen. Yeah, she's very creative. If, if we got whipping sometimes, but after you're, I mean, when you're in your eight, nine, ten year old state, you're almost as big and tall as she is. She's yeah. not going to be able to take that. So she had to get real creative. And, oh, she was very creative. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I did. I sort of learned after yeah. her. Yeah, so maybe we'll share some of those stories in the future. Because, yeah. And maybe you can meet her. That would be even more fun. Oh, wouldn't that be fun <laughs> yeah. if all three of us yeah. were together? That, that, would be, be good. that would be a good time. Yeah. So. You know, we need to write a book. <laughs> yes. <laughs> With her. <laughs> yes, with her, the three of us. Uh, anyway, what do you think is one of the biggest, most important things, if you were to just talk about parenting quick here, what would be one of the most, one of the most important things in your mind as a parent to keep in mind? Like, You mean like a principle? Yeah, like a... Okay, well, I would have to principle. say that an overriding principle uh, that I was taught by my parents and then into me and then my brothers and then on to our children, Sarah and and Luke being my children, was the principle of honor. It, it, you know, I'm a pastor, some of your, maybe your uh, viewers don't know it, I'm a pastor, and so I don't wanna be preachy, but the very first principle in the Bible written to children is to honor your mother and father. And there's a promise connected with it, is that your days may be long. My mother took that literally. She, <laughs> if, if you don't honor me, your days are going to be very short. So that was my mother. But uh, um, uh, that's the overriding principle. In fact, for me, the word honor is a big deal word um, because, uh, well, for, for a number of reasons. I think everything is 
that we do in life is based in honor. Number, you know, honor, how do we honor ourselves? How do we honor God? How do we honor one another? All of that kind of stuff. So that's a very big word. It's probably not, you know, a long enough tape here to, yeah. <laughs> to unpack all of that. But certainly with parenting, I think of honor as the, um, the overriding principle that has to be in place before you work on any other principles. You know, I can make a, a good case for the principle of hard work, for example, but it still has as its base the, uh, the idea of honor. And so I think honor is, to me, uh, a big thing. And, and particularly, I, I think we see less and less of that yeah, in I our society. That. So I think it's actually more important than ever before that That's we true. input it into our children. Yeah, it is such a great um, principle to teach your kids because it's lacking out there. And I think it will even help them in, their, in succeeding as adults because it is lacking a yeah, lot. And yeah. so it helps them stand out when they have that, um, that quality, that value of honoring other people. Uh, it will help them even go farther. It helps their... them in their job. It helps them mm -hmm. in their marriage eventually, That's so if true. they're going to get married. It helps them in their uh, relationships as kids with siblings, yeah. uh, certainly back to the mother and father, whatever. Yeah. So yeah, uh, school teachers, I mean, it, it goes everywhere. It goes yeah. everywhere. Why is it so hard to honor your sibling? <laughs> yeah, well, my, my brother hard. and I, we, I mean, we could go at it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you guys were only, uh, remind me, how close 19 are you? 19 months 19 apart. 19 months mm -hmm. apart. And so, and you were first. Yes. So that didn't do well for Luke's eagle, we have to admit. Yeah, okay. when the girl. But on the other hand, too, to defend Luke, I think sometimes you played the mother card a lot. So that there were some things going on there too, I do believe. But I remember one time. Can I tell a story? Sure. I remember one time. Sorry, that, Luke. <laughs> that uh, Luke and Sarah were probably in their mid-teens, and it's that junior high age, getting into high school, uh, 14, 15, 16, somewhere right in there. We were living in Lincoln, Nebraska, and um, uh, they were always fighting and bickering and and. You know, you you touched me and that kind of stuff and drive you crazy. And finally, uh, uh, their mother and I had had it. Uh, Susan and I had had it. And so I thought, I got to solve this problem. So I called both of them in. I'm sitting on the couch just like this. Uh, Susan was next to me. We're sitting in the living room. I called them. They're standing right there in front of me. And I said, all right, there's a new rule in the house. And I was going to teach them on it. I says, until you become each other's best friends you can have no other friends and they looked at me like i had lost my mind and so i said they said what do you mean i said you're you have all your other friends luke had his friends sarah had hers and i says you can't have any other friends you can't spend time with them you can't do anything with anybody else until the two of you become best friends uh, yeah, first and foremost, you got to honor each other. Oh my! They oh, looked so at me mean. like, oh yeah, right. <laughs> they both looked at me like they could puke. <laughs> and so we enforced it, and oh boy, they changed their tune pretty quickly. And they had to. It took about Ma a week and a half. It was magic. We it was magic. Here. Yes, yes. Best friends. Because and then they became best friends, and they all of a sudden I started hearing them talking about each other better. There was no fighting. There was no. Uh, niggling at each other and all that and um, and they were getting along and then we said okay now you can have other friends and yeah. <laughs> so that's sort of an honor lesson yes Th so and that was my mother coming out yeah, by the right. way because that was creative discipline yes she would do something exactly, she would do exactly like that, something yep. like that. Yeah. <laughs> the good news for you parents who have just a couple kids maybe um, is I think when you have only like one other option in sibling, eventually you realize, okay, I better get along with this one because yeah. I don't have any other options. My brother and I are really close yeah. as adults. So, and then also, of course, we were taught honor to honor each other. So that helped get us through those years where we could have strangled each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now we're good, good friends. So yeah. there's hope for you parents out there. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. And those years are the worst. I mean, I, oh, I mean, they're trying to figure out who they are and everything else. And <laughs> I get all that. I went through that the same way. But yeah, um, we all do. Now, my mother's creative way of doing it was when we would go out to play or something like that. When we three boys were growing up, 
her rule was you you had to work it out and her rule was don't come and tell me anything unless there's blood oh yeah you, <laughs> she you, always you, said she that. Says, don't that. even come in the house <laughs> unless it, i don't want to hear it i don't want to hear any argument i want to hear it. unless there's blood i don't want to so we would actually try to see if we can get each other to bleed <laughs> Hey, that was fun. I like talking about parenting because I am in the thick of it. Yes. And so, if you're willing to come back, and we'll do, we'll make a second part here. Talk about this topic a little more. All so, right. yeah. stay tuned, guys, and you'll see another video soon from us. Good. Bye.